In this video, we're going to look at DNA replication. And the first thing that happens is we take the DNA double helix and we unzip it. So we pull apart the hydrogen bonds that hold together the A's, T's, C's and G's, and we now expose the template that can be copied to make the new um, strand of DNA. So second step after we've unzipped the double helix is to join new nucleotides according to the base pairing rules. And you'll see every time there's an A, there's a T on the opposite strand and vice versa. And everywhere there's a G, there's a C on the new strand that's being made. And the third step in DNA replication is to form two new strands each strand consisting of one of the originals or the old strand and one new. And this is known as semi-conservative replication. So let's add a little bit more detail to this um, scheme. So in this picture, we've got the same idea, DNA double helix on the left has been unzipped and we're building two new strands one on each of the old strands. Now, to make this work, we use some enzymes, and that's the sort of uh, biological workhorse in the cell, the molecular factory is an enzyme. So there are several different enzymes involved in DNA replication. To unzip the DNA, we use an enzyme called helicase. A's at the end of a word in biology indicates it's usually an enzyme and the rest of the word of the name of the enzyme tells you what it does. So DNA helicase is an enzyme that unhelicizes, undoes the helix of DNA. So that's the first thing that has to happen. And then DNA polymerase comes in to make a polymer of DNA. So you'll see um, here, let's pick a color that we can see, um, that a new strand of DNA is being made and it actually drives into the replication fork and helps the DNA helix, helicase to unzip the DNA for more of the DNA to be exposed for new DNA to be made. So DNA is being made here as well as over here. So we're making DNA, a new DNA strand on each of the exposed template strands. Now you'll notice on the lagging strand, which is the strand that gets made second, gets copied second, um, it lags behind the leading strand, the DNA is made in chunks. So we're making a little bit at a time. And as we reveal more of this DNA, as we unzip it, we can make another piece. And then as we reveal a little bit more, we can make another piece. So the pink strand here, the lagging strand, gets made in small chunks after the um, other strand has been made. But the, ch the chunks aren't joined together. So we need another enzyme to come in and actually mend those um, pieces and join them together. And that enzyme is called DNA ligase. So it will actually physically attach one strand to another here so that you have a continuous strand of DNA opposite the lagging strand. There is one more enzyme that I'll introduce at this point, which isn't um, super important to remember, but it's quite an interesting enzyme. It's called a topoisomerase, sounds like quite a mouthful, but its job is to make sure that as we're unzipping the DNA, so at this point here, um, um, at the end of the helix, as we unzip it, it actually seems to supercoil. Just like when you're taking two pieces of wool and you're trying to pull them apart, two strands of wool, it makes the rest of the wool really tightly coiled. Well, topoisomerase or topoisomerase actually unsupercoils the DNA. So it's, it's a very interesting enzyme that's doing a little job there. Now, this is the overall picture with a little bit more detail. So I'll just highlight what's extra on here. Um, this is kind of 
probably don't need to remember all of this, but it's just got some interesting features. So one of the things to notice here is these little red blobs. When the DNA first gets unzipped, you've got the A's and the T's and the C's and the G's exposed. And what they really want to do um, energetically, not because they want to because they have emotions, but energetically, it would be much more beneficial for them to zip straight back up. So you've just pulled them apart using helicase. The first thing they want to do is zip straight back up because the A's and the T's fit together and the C's and the G's fit together. So you have to stabilize the newly unzipped DNA and you use binding proteins, these little red blobs, to stabilize the newly exposed base pairs. So that's quite an interesting feature. It's one job that a protein can do in the cell. Um, you'll notice here there's DNA polymerase and it has made the light blue strand and it's driving in towards the replication fork and here are our lagging strands they've actually got a special name uh, they're named after the scientist who um, characterized them okazaki he's a japanese he was a japanese guy um, but um, discontinuous pieces or short pieces or pieces on the lagging strand any of those terms would be acceptable um, but you'll notice there's a little red bit here, and the red bit is an RNA, a little piece of RNA, which is a similar nucleotide to DNA. You'll meet it again later on in the course, but you need an enzyme to pop it in place. And it exists for as long as it's needed for DNA polymerase to make the blue strand, and then it will get replaced with DNA as the DNA polymerase reaches it. So... There are a couple of extra details that you could add in as you're learning about DNA replication.